stuff's on. I'm in a bad mood already. Just because, yeah. Oh, man. Algorithms. Yeah. Welcome into the show, everybody. Welcome in. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome into the show. Big show this week. A lot of stuff going on. Big news, breaking news, bunch of stuff. Uh, big fights happening. Biggest boxing match ever going on this week. Probably the biggest title fight. Or not even a title fight. It's probably the biggest fight since, you know, Mike Tyson in the late 80s. With Ben Askren and Jake Paul. <laughs> I was like, I, was like a, I don't think Fury fights for a while. With, with a YouTuber. Yeah fighting a guy that's an actual fighter but uh-huh. in a sport that's not his sport Bork. and I, I don't understand and people are going to watch it that's the bad part i'm not paying for that oh i'm not paying for it either but uh the guy will put it on twitter <laughs> you know the one thing is it, go back to like when they have their their press conferences or whatever you know their ramp up mm-hmm. like you could see it in jake paul's face like you know when he got face palmed by ben and all yeah. that stuff and then they sat down and had their little thing because Ben's not a striker. Yeah. But when, when Ben told him, goes, you only have a chance because it's boxing. Because any other fight, yeah, it would be a homicide. Mm-hmm. Of like, and it, like you could see in Paul's mind of like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's probably like accurate. that's legit. Like <laughs> yeah. this guy's had championships. Uh-huh. Been on Olympic wrestling team. Yeah. Of like <laughs> anything besides the rules of boxing. You have no chance. Like, this guy is going to drag you down uh, and pummel you. Yeah. He's just going to wipe your so, face with the mat. You know, and he's like, I'm now I've seen that Paul predicted he's going to knock him out in less than two rounds. Yeah. Like, and I'm not saying, you know, whatever you always say, anybody can get clipped or whatever. Mm-hmm. But that's usually saying that anybody can get clipped when it comes to MMA with a four ounce glove. Yeah, of exactly. Like, hey, there's not a lot of room for uh, error there. <laughs> Now, if they're wearing, I don't know what their their ounces are, yeah. ten, either 10 or 12s. I mm-hmm. don't know what they agreed to fight with. But I also watched Robbie Lawler straight train wreck Ben Askren to the face with a right hook, mm-hmm. and he hits like a Mack truck, and Ben ate it. Yeah. So, it's, I, I, well, so to me, I find it hard to believe that Paul's going to knock him out. That's, that's where I'm at with it. He, he, one, like you said, the, the glove is heavier, so there's a little yeah. bit more cushion in it. And the guy has fought in UFC fights before. Like you say, yeah, he, yeah we know he's not a striker, but he's been hit in the face before. Yeah. You know, it, it's a lot. Is this the Paul that fought Nate Robinson? Yes. Okay. So, so has, he, a, has he actually that fought an actual fighter yet? No. Okay. So that's, you know, you until knocked out an undersized <laughs> point guard from yeah. the NBA yeah. that's never fought before. No. And that's, you know, and I have trouble. Now, whether this guy is an actually legitimate good boxer, I don't know. I think he has some skills because I, and he's been taking mm-hmm. it seriously and actually yeah. training. But that's like saying I have skills. Yeah. Or, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's like, yeah. yeah, but I'm not like Ben Askren's a professional fighter. Professional fighter. Mm-hmm. Like Nate Robinson's a professional athlete. Yeah. Not a fighter. Not a fighter. Like, ben Askren fought but, for a living. Thing, yeah. Had titles. Mm hmm. That's where I, I mean, whether he wins or not, I don't know. And I frankly don't give a fuck now. But well, uh, yeah, I think he's he may be in for a rude awakening. You yeah. Know? Either way, like, he's going to get hit this time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, in the way the way I look and actually I listened to Ben talk about it. He goes. The way I took I took this fight. Um, seeing it's a way to make some money. I'm not mm-hmm. I can't. You know, he had his hip replaced. So really mixed martial, martial arts are over yeah. for him. He says, hey, you know, I can do this. It's eh, it's something to do. Mm Going to get, you know, it's a payday. Yeah. He says, the way I look at it is I'm not a striker. Mm -hmm. He goes, if I get in that ring and it turns out that Jake Ball can actually box, then I'm probably going to lose. Yeah. But I don't think that he can. (laughs) Yeah. That You know, that's his point of like, I don't think that he can. can. And if you're going to come out and try to knock him out in the first two rounds, well, you've never went eight rounds. Yeah. You know, 24 minutes. Mm-hmm. Ben Askren does that. Yeah. Under the lights. Under the, of like, mm-hmm. you come out, try to knock him out, come round three, like you yeah. see Paul's arm arms start to drop, so yeah. breathing a little uh, hard, and then Ben's going to just yeah, start working. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know if Ben's going to knock him out. I yeah. think he would win. To, if there's a knockout, I would say Paul wins. If it's a decision, I think like, Ben wins. Yeah. Yeah, good thing we don't care, you know? <laughs> I, I don't. I, yeah. Like, I want Ben to win. Yeah. Or actually, you know what? It'd be more interesting if Paul won, mm-hmm. because then they keep calling out. Now yeah. you get Because now you beat an MMA guy uh-huh. that's not a striker. Yeah. Your next step is to fight is an now actual you boxer. fight one like 
Like you, when you would call out Dustin Poirier, yeah, because he will thump your ass. <laughs> I mean, but that's the ne- that's your next to, step. Yeah, why doesn't he just fight an actual boxer? Oh, because you have no chance. That's just what I'm no saying. Chance. Yeah, it's no chance. Like if he's for real about this, or because that was the other one. Like the call outs this week was uh, like Tyson Fury. Yeah, calling out like saying something like he beat the hell out of Francis Ngannou. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're a heavyweight boxing champion. Yeah. Of course you would. Yeah. I, like <laughs> you called out a guy that doesn't isn't mm-hmm. in your sport. Mm-hmm. And and it act like it's a big deal that you would beat him. Now the thing with that is is can Francis knock you out 100% cuz he hits like a truck. Yeah. But you <laughs> it's what boxing is what you do. Uh-huh. So there's no he can't kick you, can't take yeah. you down, so he can only throw fists. Yeah. And you're really good at not getting hit. Uh-huh. Yeah. So what are we talking about? It doesn't. Uh-huh. It makes no. I don't like that shit. It, it bugs me. Like if you're going to do a sport, stick to your sport. If you want to fight somebody yeah. in the UFC, go be a, a mixed martial artist. If you want to fight somebody in boxing, fight and that, be a boxer. That's the funny thing because it's always under the boxing rules. Mm-hmm. It's never like Tyson Fury going up. I think uh, even if you did something just a little different, go. I'll fight Francis Ngannou, um, and we'll do it in kickboxing, yeah. where, where he also can use his legs. Yeah, exactly. Well, now it's something different. Uh huh. Now all of a sudden, like, you, like yeah. with the McGregor Poirier thing of like, well, Francis Gano kicks you in the legs a couple times. You're now done. you got a problem. You're done. You're falling. Your big ass is falling. He's gonna knock you out with his fist. Uh huh. But he's gonna kick them legs out. Yeah. Or if you just said, ah, okay, you can use elbows. Uh huh. Well, now you're done. Now you're really done. If we just allow the dirty boxing like they do. Yeah. Like, oh, if they can grab you, hold you, and push you into the ropes and hit you. Mm-hmm. Well, now it's different. But they won't do that. Yeah. It's like LeBron James comes out and goes, you know what? I can beat, I can beat Tom Brady in one-on-one basketball. Yeah, exactly. Well, no it's fucking, fucking shit, shit, dude. Yeah, exactly. He didn't play this sport. Uh-huh. I mean. Yeah. Oh, speaking of NBA players or, you know, obviously a lot of NFL players, NBA players, they played other sports growing right. up. Right. You know, I had no idea. And I saw this on Twitter the other day. Chase Claypool averaged 48 points a game his senior year. In high school, yeah, basketball, he's from Canada. I understand that, but that's still a lot of points. Do they play with different rules? I don't know, but it's like six points for a he, layup. Yeah, but he averaged. You know what I'm saying? So he had 48 majority of the games. Yeah, like that's that was just well, weird. Well, more to than me. 48 the majority yeah, of the games. I get it, but that's what I'm saying. They're like, <laughs> holy shit! It's amazing how you look at some of those guys of like how they could have went professional in multiple sports. Yeah. Now, not saying that he could have, mm-hmm. mainly because I, I don't know what his height is. Yeah, I think he's like 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, so he's too small yeah, for too the small NBA, NBA, which is yeah. such a weird thing. Yeah. Of like, when I was a kid, if you were 6'4", you're a big guy. Yeah. Now, now, it's like, now you're a point guard. And kind of a small one in yeah. some places. <laughs> like, Michael Jordan was 6'6". Six, six. Yeah. And that's not, I mean, it's yeah, like, I know. for the position he played if, in today... It, Maybe he's a little undersized yeah. now. Yeah. Obviously, skill sets, you know, I don't want to get into that fucking yeah. debate. <laughs> but, you know, it's yeah, just a weird it's, it's thing. It's weird to think now of how much bigger people are. Well, like fucking uh, Giannis, something from yeah. Greek, that guy. Yeah. I don't know how to say his Antetokupo. last name. Is that how you say it? Yep. I wouldn't know if it was. So I'm just going off of that you're telling me the truth. Guy's seven foot yeah. and has a fucking point guard. Yeah, I know. And I think a lot of people don't. Think about it, because Kevin Durant is so skinny. Mm-hmm. Kevin Durant is borderline seven foot tall. Yeah, he's six eleven. Yeah, ish. Yeah, you know, yeah. in between that six eleven, seven foot of like, mm-hmm. but he's so skinny. People don't think that of like, yeah. yeah, this guy's pulling up from everywhere, and he's seven foot you, tall. You can't fucking block him because when he shoots, he's almost eight foot tall. Yeah, or nine foot tall. Yeah, yeah. what are you gonna do? Uh huh. And then like the LeBron thing of like, it's like, well, he's so big, but LeBron's only six eight. But he's also like 270. Yeah, exactly. And we'll just go and through just, you. Yeah. And like the whole Zion thing, same thing, because he's like that yeah. same. Mm-hmm. Isn't it a weird, but uh, LeBron and Zion are about pretty much the same size. Mm-hmm. Just how thick Zion is, though. Zion looks thicker. Yeah. And also, so when you say they're the same size, it almost makes it look like he's out of shape. Uh-huh. And the same way, now this is before the Harden thing, where he was looked, out of shape he looked fat but his beard is so big like yeah. even when he was prime time hardened in houston mm-hmm. like is he fat yeah and then like 
if you take the beard away, it's like, oh no, he's in no. really crazy good shape. Yeah. But the beard makes it look that's like yeah, he's... that's what happens with me all the time. You know, <laughs> people like, always, yeah, you're, yeah, you're a really skinny guy. Yeah, you like just have I, a beard. If I shaved my chest and my stomach, you would see my abs. That's yeah. Yeah. I believe that. <laughs> Especially if you lean up against a fence or something yeah, like you know. Exactly. Some well placed makeup. <laughs> but it uh back on that of like it's guys like in the NFL that when they played high school baseball, it's like, well, it's like my junior year, I hit 25 home runs mm-hmm. and 28. And people's like, well, that's not that many. And high school baseball, that a is lot. a shit ton of home <laughs> runs. Exactly. Like people hitting in the 20s yeah. is a bunch. A ton, <laughs> ton of home runs. Crazy. But then it's like, which that's a weird one too, of like all these guys that's like, oh yeah, yeah, I was probably the best at baseball, but I'm, you know, playing in the NFL. It's like, mm-hmm. why are you not playing not in, baseball in the then? <laughs> because they make one more money and, and two fully guaranteed. Yeah. And you play way longer and you don't have to get your head ripped off. It feels like a good thing. I honestly was, I, Kyler Murray's the biggest one who should have just played baseball. Yeah. I don't understand. Like, like his I, contract would be ridiculous. Like he loves football. Yeah. But man, those contracts. But then again, I know he's a first round pick in baseball, but that doesn't mean a fucking no, thing. No, because it's like, yeah, would he, he would he get up you, there? Here's your ten million that yeah. we signed you to. Mm-hmm. Five, four years from now, maybe you you'll be good enough to get up to the majors. Also, it was with Oakland, who pays yeah. nobody. So mm-hmm. then you're also on a Triple A team as you're in the majors. Yeah, and you have to perform well enough for the Yankees to you know. Yeah. To want to you that, yeah, that's yeah. kind of how Oakland works, but mm-hmm. it's just like I don't understand. Yeah. Baseball is such a a weird one. Yeah. Well, I've seen they uh, came out because Theo Epstein works for Major League Baseball now, mm-hmm. and he's trying to hey, how do we make the game better? Yeah, fire your fire your president. Yeah, for one of like, well, we talked about the kid get, uh, getting kicked out and suspended two games from the Reds for celebrating. Yeah, for celebrating, yes. But then, like, three days later, the Mets win a game because mm-hmm. a guy gets hit by a pitch with the bases loaded. Yep. The umpire called a strike, meaning he was leaning out over the fucking plate and got hit. Mm-hmm. Game's over. Yep. You win. Like, he called a strike? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Kick that guy out for celebrating, though. Doesn't of, make like, any what, sense. So what they're doing is, like, the second half of whatever Eastern Eastern League, I think is what it's called, it's kind of like a single a kind of thing yeah and that's where where they want to implement some rule changes they kind of try it out mm-hmm. there so in the uh, second half of that season they're going to move the mound back to 61 feet six inches it's 60 feet six inches what it is now so they move it back a foot to see what happens mm. okay because obviously we said three years in a row there's more strikeouts and hits in the yeah. major league baseball yeah never happened before now it's mm-hmm. happened three years in a row 58,000 strikeouts there were last year, or the Jesus. last full season. Jesus like, Christ. So moving it back a foot obviously gives them yeah. more time. Like, the last time they moved the, the pitcher's mound was... The 40s? 80, 1898. <laughs> okay. I don't, some, you know. <laughs> yeah. They still have stats yeah. for that. But obviously, they have more time to hit the ball. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, yeah. it's like... And the well, pitchers are probably pitchers like, God, I got to throw harder now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's gotten so pitcher dominant. Yeah. It's like, hey, your game's boring as fuck because nobody hits the ball. <laughs> so yeah. maybe get it and play. Yeah. It, I, just, I just wish I had. There's already a no hitter this wish, year. There's already almost been two. There's two no hitters. There's one this yesterday. Year. Yeah. There's been two no hitters this year already. It was almost a perfect game yesterday, but the guy with one out in the ninth mm-hmm. inning, the guy hit the fucking batter. Yeah. And then <laughs> retires the next two guys already had a perfect game. <laughs> But uh, what I wanted to say is when they put that post out of like, I didn't, I, I seen it too late. So you can't make a response mm-hmm. on Twitter for anybody to see it. If yeah. it's three hours later, but it was just going to be a picture of a syringe. It's like, we need to get more contact and more exciting in baseball. And we're trying to work on ways to do, yeah. to do that. It's like, Stay well, right. here's how they used to do it. And yeah. It was fun as shit watching that. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. maybe that, maybe go back to that. And as I predicted last time, the Reds went to the West Coast, lost yeah. like four out of five fucking games. So yeah, yeah. there we go. There we go. Back to the Reds. Back to normal now. Yeah. All right. So what else is going on? We talked about the bullshit that's in the world. Yeah. Well, we had the Masters were last weekend. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's right. Shout uh, out to George for winning our uh, FanDuel League. 
Yeah. Beat the shit out of everybody. Yes. Was it even? I didn't look at the final. I was uh, so far out of it. Maybe 50 points. Yeah, I was so far out of it. I didn't. Yeah. I got eight out of 10. I didn't even look where I was. Your brother got last. Did he? Yeah. I wasn't far behind, <laughs> I don't think. I was eight. So well, I was he texted me on Saturday. He goes, or Friday. It's either Friday or Saturday. And says, well, I'm out of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, it, I was like, well, I, I think I am too. So. Well, I really got fucked when DJ didn't make the cut. <laughs> that, that would really I didn't even me. pick him because I didn't figure he would. Yeah. Like it just something. It seemed weird. Something He's was just. He's my guy, so I usually stick with him. You know what I mean? Like. I've picked him about every time I've ever picked golf, and he yeah. usually does well for me, so I was just going with what I felt. Well, I mean, I went with Spieth, and he yeah, did well. he did well. Yeah, I actually had a chance to make a little run out yeah. there for and, the bowl. And George had that Zalateris of, like, I didn't know who the fuck. I work yeah. in the industry. I didn't know who the fuck that guy was. He's becoming one of my favorite ones. Pretty cool. Yeah, he seems cool. He was like, yeah, he was on, did you listen to him on McAfee's show? Yeah. He was like, yeah, he goes, all these older guys are out here giving me advice. And he's like, I thought they were going to be like mean to me and stuff. And yeah. it's like, why would you think that? It's not, you know, it well, seems like a, you know, seems like they're nice people. You know what I, I mean? love that story he told about with Longer playing on whatever Thursday. Yeah. Of like, I hit it by him by a hundred yards and he made birdie and I made par. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's how it goes. That's how it works. Yeah. But then you look at that kid. I mean, he's a stick and it's like, oh, he's he averages 310 yeah, off no, tee. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. I don't know how you hit that. Oh, I had Bryson too because, like, I want to root for the guy, but fuck, man, he's just not any good. He's not. And he's definitely not good for that course. Not for either. there. No. I mean, it's just like, okay, well, you hit it 400 yards, yeah. but. What did that do for you? It's in the fucking pine trees, man. I tell you, I watched Sunday. I watched, like, the last half of Sunday. Yeah. I wanted to punch Shoffley in the face. Did you watch the hole where he double bogeyed? I didn't see any. I had to work. So Morikawa, am my print? No, you know who won it? it? Wasn't Morikawa? Was it? No, Hideki? it wasn't. Me, Hideki, it wasn't Matsuyama. No, Mats- yeah, Matsuyama. Yeah, Matsuyama. Yeah, yeah, Matsuyama. Yeah, we are a terrible <laughs> sports <laughs> show. <laughs> we are a terrible sports show. <laughs> the fact show. that you watch it, huh. like, Is and it's name? probably because well, he's don't... not from America. Well, I... I don't know his name. <laughs> no, I not... speak English. I didn't learn it. I... I don't know. I couldn't remember. He won $2.2 million. I want to say uh, Morikawa is the one I usually pick. That's why Colin I, I, Morikawa is yeah, from here. Yes. I understand that. But yeah. yeah. Uh, Hideki. Matsuyama. Matsuyama. <laughs> uh, he double bogeys the hole before. Cuts it. Yeah. Cuts his lead. I mean, Shoffley's only two strokes behind him. Yeah. So it's a par three. Got like the water on the left side. Yeah, 16. Yeah. The only place where you can't hit it is there. Like. You just have to hit it five feet to the right. Nope. Hits the side of it, rolls in. Like, Well, there's so much room over there. There is. So much room. Hit it long. It's the only thing you can't do. Yeah, like hit it long and then... And not to mention, it's got a backboard to it of yeah. like, everybody hits it up there, lets and it run down out. right next to the pin. Yeah, like you could have, you know, at least parred the hole and stayed... You, know, you like, could have won like you did. Everybody in the practice round skips it across. You could have done that. Yeah, exactly. I, I was just like, dude, of all the things that you could have done, and you are you know when you're one and two, you know the fucking score. Yeah. Like you're not you know what I'm saying? Like in yeah. your head, you know. So you can do like, man, all I have to do is not hit it where well, I hit it. You would have not known that about that double bogey. Because the way they do their score oh, okay. scoreboard updates. All right. Well either way. Unless he could see the, okay. the standard bear. Okay. You don't keep track of the people you're with? Like that you're partnered was up he with? playing with him? Mm-hmm. Oh, then he 100%. See, yeah, yeah, I didn't see oh, it. Okay. I didn't. Yeah, yeah, he was playing so with he him. So he 100% knew what exactly. that was going on. He then. knew what was going on. He knew, oh, shit, I'm only two strokes behind now. Yeah. Yeah, and still hit it where he hit it. I love that, too. Like, people, when you think about that, and they talked about it, but it's not your money yet until you finish your card of, like, uh-huh. that shot, $600,000. Yeah. <laughs> that shot was $600,000. Yeah. I, You know, and I'm terrible at golf, but I was like, and I probably would have, you know, not even been there because I'm terrible, but I'm like, dude, that's where you have to hit it, and you didn't hit it there. Yeah, you, you, you literally, you're one of the better ones. You can put it where the <laughs> fuck you want, and nobody hits it in that pond. Yeah, exactly. I mean, in the whole week, maybe like six people hit it in that pond, and yeah. those are guys that got cut on Friday. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, like nobody hit. I understand, like you kind of chub one and hit it in Ray's Creek on twelve. I yeah. get that. Like, yeah. that's designed for you to hit it in that creek. Uh-huh. This pond is just so it would look nice. Yeah, exactly. It has no function yeah. to that hole. Uh, I mean, it's not even in play. I yeah. mean. I was just like, come on. I was rooting for the guy, too, you know. 
I call him. I didn't know that was his actual name. Was Shoffley? I called Shoffley. him Shoffley. I call him Shoffle for the longest time. Shoffle. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> What's his first name? Xander. I think I'm not real good with names. We know that, but yeah. 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 It's I like. I like. That's one of the only. I did, I watched fucking hardly zero. I watched some on Saturday. Mm. That's about all the tournament I watched. I just watched. I watched seven holes on Sunday. Yeah. So, I mean, I, you can say like the last half of it. But, yeah, the second nine. That's yeah. I mean, you have to say second nine because they don't call it back nine down there. Yeah, it's the second nine. The second nine. Yeah. Eating your cheese sandwich. <laughs> Need that shit. Your pimento cheese. <laughs> you won't shit for a week. <laughs> but here's a cheese sandwich. I wish, I wish that was their slogan. <laughs> you won't shit. <laughs> Augusta Nationals <laughs> pimento cheese sandwich for two dollars. You won't shit for a week, but <laughs> damn, is it tasty! That's perfect. Welcome to the taste of the South. That's good. You're at the Masters. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> I would just left it afterward. I, I just wanted to keep, keep going because I, I was seeing if anything else would pop <laughs> in there. Funny to say, I was like, yeah. That is, the one nice thing because obviously it, there's always a picture floats out about yeah. their menu boards and stuff like mm-hmm. fucking regular public golf course around here fucking hot dogs four dollars and <laughs> yeah. a beer so, you know and two dollars down there it's like ah, you want this it's a dollar yeah. you want this ice cream sandwich dollar I only when I went to the memorial a couple years ago it was only two dollars for your cup of beer yeah it was I was like really I'll take four <laughs> yeah, <I> mean, yeah. <laughs> well the, and the memorial because they base a lot of they're trying to be kind of that Augusta kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, they do, okay. which is a weird thing. Cause everybody sees that on TV and I've act, I've seen that place when it's not tournament week. Augusta, you mean? No, no, no. Oh, Muirfield. The, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, it's like, everybody's like, man, it, how do they keep it looking like, like looking like this all the time? It's like, well, the, it fucking doesn't like, yeah. it looks like this for the, for the tournament term- yeah, yeah. at Muirfield. And then the rest of the year, it's mm-hmm. extremely beautiful. Mm hmm. But it's not like that. Yeah. Now, Augusta National, it looks like that. Yeah. All the time. Uh, yeah. It also probably well, the, the, for the weather. Six, for the six months that they're open. Well, I'm saying, for, but the weather here in Ohio is kind of has a lot to do with that, too, right? Well, yeah. It's I mean, pretty important. Yeah. Like the, you could only do now, actually, they uh, made some improvements to Muirfield. Last year after the tournament, they tore the greens out and put a sub air system in. Oh, uh, okay. We're going to get a little nerdy, obviously what I do for a living. So I know a little bit about that stuff is, uh, that's what Augusta has. Mm. Uh, sub air is they can actually suck the moisture out. So like when it's a drainage system, so when it rains, they can suck it out Mm -hmm. and then it actually has a, you can heat and cool the greens. Oh, okay. Kind of, kind of like you, you know, if you had a heated floor in your house. Yeah. So, um, like at Augusta, they use that stuff. Like they can actually dictate, like when their flowers bloom, like they oh. throw cold, they throw cold water oh, okay. on them yeah, and then heat them up to make sure they're blooming masters week. Oh, okay. That, that's why it's every time they have the yeah. masters, shit's perfect. in bloom. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, so they're, they made that, which is millions of dollars. Yeah. Millions of dollars of an upgrade, but it's a pretty cool system. That is, yeah, I mean, it seems cool. seems like you, you kind of have to have that though yeah. here in Ohio. Like that seems like, if you want to be the best, yeah, kind of have to have, especially yeah. here, especially how weirdly hilly that place is. Yeah, and you it's know? always the it's kind of like the same situation at Augusta. Like you never watch them, you never have the Masters mm-hmm. where at least one of the days doesn't rain. Yeah, yeah, and like you, you know, they just that shit rains. They turn that system on and mm-hmm. it it literally sucks the water out. Man, and it it was the same way with the Muirfield tournament. Obviously, mm-hmm. being in Ohio, it was like every time they have yeah. that, one of the days gets fucking rained, rained out. out. Yeah. To the point where the Memorial Tournament, they moved it back into yeah. June yeah. because of the rains. Like, yeah. Well, Memorial Day kind of makes sense then, since that's <laughs> what the tournament's called. But all right, all right whatever. Yeah, we'll go I mean, with it. We'll go, we'll with, go it. with that. Yeah. What else do you want to know about golf course manicuring? No, Anything it's else? okay. Augusta's closed in the summertime. Like people I don't knew that. realize that. No, I knew that. And that they well, the put one new thing, grass down every year. I did know that too. The one thing for the minimal amount of time I've done maintenance on the golf course. I would assume, I figured they would just re-sod the tees after each day. Re-sod the whole tee? Like the spot, like the parts where they, they dug at, you know what I mean? Oh, like, they plug, yeah, you know, they plug you know them. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. when I was, the year I was at Memorial, I walking by, you know, the t- watching them tee off and stuff yeah. like that, it's still, 
cut up to where when they dry, like I assumed, I just figured that they would try to plug those holes. Right. Ev- you know, after each one, I was shocked. Augusta, oh, after each person hits it? After, each, after day. each day. It Augusta just, does that. Okay. All right. Um, your field, they just, they just throw a seed mix down. It was okay. kind of like, that's like, that's what we do. Yeah. But um, Augusta actually will come in. They have like a, their own little sod farm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That has their exact, you know, their mm-hmm. tea mix or whatever mm-hmm. that's in it, and it's the, yeah. like a cup cutter, Cut it up, they yeah. they plug a bunch mm-hmm. of bunch of those out, and then they go to the par threes mm-hmm. and stuff. That's why you don't see the divots the next day. Yeah, it's like, well, fuck all that. We're yeah. like, we're not doing <laughs> that. No, I've cut so, cups before, and it sucks, and I'm not very good at it. Uh, yeah, you're, <laughs> you wasn't great. I mean, I had to recut a lot of those, but um, of the eighteen I did, you had to recut ten of them. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I've also, well, you've been involved in the plugging portion. Of yes. We kind of did the practice screen and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Now imagine doing that to yeah. fucking divots on the tee box <laughs> yeah. every day. I don't I'm like, to. Nah. No. Nope. I'm I good. feel like golfers are okay seeing div- Like, they understand. Yeah, yeah that's what But happens. that's just not what they are. Mm. I mean, it's just. Another level. Here's the amount of money we need to spend. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, that's why you are who you are. Yeah. I loved all the people that were trying to the stories that came out because everybody's trying to boycott stuff in Georgia. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you've seen that. And like the PGA tour needs to take the masters out of Georgia. It's like, all right, morons. First of all, do a quick Google search. That's not a PGA tour event like Augusta national that yeah. happens to be in Georgia. They own it. Yeah, so exactly. unless you want them to cancel their own event, it's not going to happen. So exactly. You just beating up the wrong tree. Mm-hmm. All right. Nobody should be listening by now. No, we can talk about football. You want to get the football? Yeah, we can say whatever we want now. I can get. I can say all the shit that I hold back (laughs) from this show. Oh God, nobody, nobody will watch again. Would like listen to this? Would think that I don't hold shit back, or that you don't? I hold a lot. Like ninety percent of the shit that comes through my head during Mm -hmm. this show, I don't say. Yeah, no, I'm with you because it'd probably be in prison. Yeah, (laughs) we wouldn't be able. Can't go. You can't go to prison for saying shit. I think you can. (laughs) Things in my head you can. I can go way dark. <laughs> Gonna do one of those shows where we just say whatever. Yeah. And we'll record it. And listen to and it. And then we'll listen to it and then be like, well, we can't put that out. There's <laughs> just, just no way we can shit. put that out. Like, I have to live in this society. Yeah. <laughs> so, football wise, you know, we had a, you can call it a big signing. I don't know. With Jadivion Clowney going to the Browns. How stupid is he? <laughs> Go with what you're talking about. I want to see what you mean by stupid. For the contract. Okay, yeah. All right, yeah, it's stupid. Yeah, yeah, stupid. He turned down three years yeah. from this team yep. last year. Last year. That was going to pay. 17. Yeah, and some people say those reports are wrong. Even say if it's 14. Yeah. 14 over three, or 32, get whatever mm-hmm. it was, 32 whatever it was, guaranteed. Yeah. Yep. And now you're, like, you have to perform to get to 10. Yeah. Like, it's like, you didn't pay attention when they put that out there. It was mm-hmm. up eight. to up yeah. to ten million. It's eight with two million of incentives yeah. or things like that. Which pretty much in my head, I'm thinking if I'm the Browns, great job getting that done because your incentives have to be snaps. Yeah, how many to. snaps are you going to play? You know what I mean? Because yeah. that's in my head. You know, all the Browns were like, "Oh my God, we got Jadavion on Clowney." Okay, well the one he's lazy as fuck. Yeah, sorry guys, you got nobody. Uh, he's injured all the time and he plays an average of two downs per drive yeah when it's third down but when it's third down and distant yeah like if it's less than third and six yeah he doesn't play he doesn't play it's not him so you you have you pay the eight million dollars a year to a specialist package guy yeah because you, you know i mean you're going to put him in on packages if it's a a passing down you know it's a first and 15 or a, you know Anything like that, you're going to put him in the game, but it's you're forgetting about him being lazy as shit, him being injured all the time. You just saw the name and got excited. Yeah. The way I look at it is one, eight million dollars, nothing. Yeah. I and mean, if it's ten million, it's still nothing. Mm-hmm. But this is the worst. It's the worst move I've seen this GM make. Yeah. Like you could have got a for ten million. Like you, I know Carlos Dunlap ended up staying. Yeah, in uh, Seattle, mm-hmm. but like you could have got somebody like him that's a gonna reliable that's guy, actually gonna play, mm-hmm. and that seems like he 
he wanted out of Cincinnati. Yeah. Because he wanted to play. Mm Mm-hmm. And he didn't fit into their defensive scheme, and he was getting six, seven snaps. Yeah, exactly. And you guys signed a guy that that's what he wants to uh-huh. do. Like, this guy at least wants to play. Yeah. And, you know, the from basically all the, if, you, if I'm basing it off of mock drafts, your top five pass rushers in this draft are going to be at where you pick. Yeah. Because everybody sees yeah. all these skill positions. And I think... I wouldn't be shocked if they picked one. No, and the other one, they signed that Tack McKinley, who was a first round draft pick for the Falcons a couple years ago. Yeah. Just doesn't have his fucking head on straight. Yeah. And he produced when he played. <coughs> and uh well they still got who was the guy that had twelve sacks for them last year that's still out there? That he hadn't signed. Vernon, yet. Olivier Vernon? Yeah. Yeah. That he's still out yeah, there. He's still, yeah. So you still bring him he just, back. He was just I mean, hurt. He got tore his Achilles or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so I, I, you know, you signed a guy for packages. That's all you signed him for. You know, you signed him to. Let's clarify this for packages of defense, not for his package. Yeah. Sorry. I, I there don't know. Is no There's no There's no male prostitution <laughs> going on in the. I, 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 I cannot confirm or deny they're not prostituting out their players in Cleveland. <laughs> anyway. Um, but yeah, it's just, I don't know. I didn't like it. You signed him, like I said, you signed him because it's J.B. on Clowney. But for him, like you said, the three the three year contract last year, people forget that he's still 26 years old. Yeah. Well, the funny thing is, I, I seen it float through because obviously, you know, in the Twitter world, things mm-hmm. get into the news feed. Yeah. You know, it's like hey, Cleveland just signed this guy and it's that fucking yeah, exactly. video from that tackle against what, South Carolina? Yeah, exactly. Of like, he's made so much money off of that. one fucking play. He was drafted number one overall for that play. Yeah. You couldn't put up numbers when J.J. Watt was on the other side. Yeah. A prime J.J. Watt. Yeah. Prime J.J. Watt. Yeah. Defensive MVP on yeah. the other side. Two of them. Well, just, yeah, but well, the one guy had his taken away. No, I'm saying no. J.J. Uh-huh. Watt won it two times when he was there. Oh, I, me- I thought you meant the other one that was defensive the linebacker that was there, yeah. <laughs> was it Cushing? Cushing, yeah. He steroids. was doing stuff. That if anybody you saw be- him flex, you'd be like, yeah, that guy's on yeah, some shit. That guy's on something. That guy's massive. But it was just crazy the hype that it got just because Javion Clowney. He hasn't yeah. done anything. Is he from Michigan? Is that what that was? He's from South Carolina. He hit the he dude from Michigan. He hit the guy from yeah, Michigan. He okay. hit the dude from Michigan. I couldn't remember. I would understand if he wasn't a good player in the NFL if he's from Michigan. <laughs> They don't play football, but, um, yeah, yeah. I just, I don't like, it's okay. Cause it cost them nothing mm-hmm. and they That's needed, really, a, they, they needed, needed a guy. S- yeah. But the other one, you flip it around, you know, Alden Smith gets another chance in Seattle had a decent year last year. I think he had like 10 sacks with the Cowboys last year. Gets to go to Seattle, probably in a better position in Seattle than in Dallas. Yeah. Just because they like to be a little bit more aggressive. Well, you know what I mean? I mean, I think he's kind of got his head on now, mm-hmm. does he? I mean, who knows? But that's kind of where he's at. I'm yeah. like, could be. Yeah. But then again, also could be out of the league. Yeah, so, exactly. You know and I mean, he, and he's only 28. Yeah. Like he still has a lot of a lot of game left in him because he's sat for three years. Well, he'll get up there with Team Three. They'll get him straightened out. Team Three. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So the Justin Field had a second pro day. I find it so fucking weird that he had to have a second fucking pro day. All of them are. I mean, Mac I, I Joe, get that, Trey but, Lance is having a second yeah. one. It's I, just because there's no combine. I know it. It's just weird that he, but in the back of my mind, I'm thinking of all the criticisms that came about him. He had to have a second pro day in his own head to try to prove those people wrong. And well, still they shit on him after this one. Yeah. And it was <laughs> mainly just because everybody's doing it. But here's the problem I have with it. And I, Obviously, I'm at work when this shit happens. Yeah. The fact that it's, it wasn't televised because they're only allowed to televise one of their pro days. Yeah, I know. Like, well, nobody's ever had two pro days. Yeah. <laughs> so how does that rule? We've made exceptions. In effect? And why the fuck in a world of content? Yeah. When you go, no, no, no. This one's got to be private. Oh, so all these people, you can take their phones away because there's a shitload of footage out here. Just put it on. Yeah. I, I don't know. Really and of all the exceptions we've made because of all this COVID shit, you don't think that one should have been one of them? Yeah. People want to see that shit for some reason. He's yeah. in, I mean, he's, he's in shorts, shorts throwing to receivers that aren't guarded. 
Yeah. But people want to watch it. I know. I don't I think, know what you're going to find out from that. But. I mean, I think it's, I like to watch some of the combine just to see. I think it's cool how people, how fast people move. Yeah. Not necessarily like a straight line speed, but just right. the way that their hips work. I just find that stuff really cool. And, you know, people want to talk about, well, you know, how, why is this guy who, you know, let's just look at the corners this yeah. year. Let's look at the dude from Virginia Tech, Caleb Farley. Look at the guy from Alabama. D- that little shit right there, the way that he comes in and out of his breaks and his movements, yeah. probably the difference yeah. between him going in number 10 and number 19. Yeah. It's so weird to me that that's it, but it's cool to watch him. Well, and people, when they make a big deal about the pro day for like Justin Fields or Mac Jones, uh, you could say something about the kid from BYU because a lot of those, you didn't see any tape yeah. and maybe you want to stand next to him and actually see how big the kid is. Yeah, exactly. But for Justin Fields... His second pro day was so he could talk to Shanahan and them. Yeah, exactly. That's it. Yeah. They didn't come there to watch him fucking throw. No, they already knew how they he throws. They already throw. know how he throws. Mm-hmm. They've seen it. They yeah. all these guys, if they if you if you're a subscriber to thinking that these guys are making decisions off this pro day for a quarterback, well, he threw good, they're gonna take him. They already knew he could throw. Yeah. What the fuck are we they wouldn't be there if yeah. there's like I don't know. He's got a shitty arm, but let's go take a look. Oh, nope. He's our guy now. Yeah, like, exactly. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You're an idiot. Uh, the thing for me, with Justin, the uh, game against Indiana and game against Northwestern, he's not the number two overall pick yeah. because of those games. Mm-hmm. And then you take the Clemson games and you toss those aside. It doesn't make any sense. Done, of like, That's the only NFL style defense in college football. Mm-hmm. And then, well, he didn't go past his first read. Well, the guy's open by 15 fucking yards. I'm going to throw it to him. What? Yeah. You would shit on me if I looked past him and then threw it to another yeah, guy. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, with all the stat work of, he went past his first read more than the other guys that are ahead uh, of him. So I don't understand. It's just weird. You know, I I don't know why all that shit happens, but did you see Mel Kuyper put out his new mock draft? The seventh one or whatever. Fourth, I had him going there. One. I had him going there. It's like, well, you put out. It's like the guy that has thirty-five fucking NCAA brackets. Mel, yeah, you're I gonna. Know. I mean, eventually you're gonna get some of them, right? It was more believable. Like I got behind it more this one than I had the other ones. Okay. And, I didn't see. I I think I scanned through. Is this one that was out a couple days ago? Or yeah. Whatever? Yeah. Yeah. With the mock trades and stuff. Yeah, with the trades yeah, and gotcha. things like that. So he still. He came out on, I think it might have been Get Up, and literally just said, "Ah, four, Mac Jones is a lock at three. Is a lock. Yeah. So he, you know, for sure believes that the Niners are taking uh, Mac Jones. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I lean toward the, I think they're taking Justin Fields. I'm not 100% sure that the Jets aren't taking Justin Fields. They may. But I, I was listening, cause obviously, it was cold out this morning, so we went into work a little later. Mm-hmm. And uh, so Keyshawn's show was on. Okay. And they just happened to be talking about Justin Fields when mm-hmm. I was on my way in. And he was talking about that, you know, the 49ers. He goes, 100%. They It's Justin Fields. Yeah. That was his of like, mm-hmm. yeah, they're with Mac Jones or whatever. But like if Mac, jo- if they say, well, he's more polished and he's ready to go. He says, but Kyle Shanahan can make any quarterback work. Why would you not take the one that's played big time games and also has more upside mm-hmm. and is also mobile? Yeah, exactly. He says it doesn't make any sense. No, it makes no sense for them to take him. And when he goes and people say, oh, he reminds me of Tom Brady coming out of Michigan. No, he doesn't. No. Honestly, he's probably better than Tom Brady was coming out, coming of, out, out of Michigan. College. Yeah, for sure he was. 100%. Yeah. I mean, it. <laughs> but. Also, not Tom Brady. No, yeah. Nobody, nobody is. is. Quit making those comparisons. Well, we're looking for a new Lamar Jackson. Nope. Only one of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Lamar Jackson's not Michael Vick nope. either. So no. when they make these comparisons, and mm. that, that was a Mel Kuyper thing, he reminds me of Tom Brady coming out of Michigan. So why is he? Why do you have him going third then? Because Tom yeah, Brady went in the seventh, seventh round. fucking round. Huh. So Shut the fuck up, obviously Piper. not. So you fix your hair and eat your pumpkin pie, <laughs> bitch. Is Trevor Lawrence a lock at one? I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure he is. But, but somebody that, where... that was an interesting thing, like with all the stuff coming out about Trevor Lawrence. And mm-hmm. imagine if that was Justin Fields. He'd be a fifth round draft pick now. Yeah. Well, a guy doesn't want to play. Doesn't like it. Yeah. Like, well, well then why? 
why is Trevor Lawrence the you know, number one? I pick. like that that he doesn't take too serious. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like All that right. he's just he's laid back. That's what I want in my quarterback. Yeah. A laid back. Laid back. Threw a pick. Didn't seem to care. Yeah. He's getting his ass kicked by Ohio State, <laughs> and he was smiling on the sideline. Yeah. It's like well, sometimes people say funny shit. Yeah. So. Exactly. Yeah. So he has Trevor Lawrence at one, Zach Wilson at two, Kuiper has Mac Jones at three. Then he had the Dolphins trading up to the Falcons, trading yeah. back into the top four. Yeah. To get Pitts. Yeah. I have one issue with that only. Okay. And I don't believe that's the trade that's made. Okay. If that's the three quarterbacks taken, if you're the Falcons, you have to take Fields. Yeah, Fields is there. They're not trading out. That's, They're taking yeah. him. And then That's again, my thing. I I find it hard to believe that they wouldn't take because one of them's gonna somebody's tumbling. Yes, somebody's tumbling. Mm-hmm. And is it going to be Trey Lance? Because if you if you think you need a quarterback, I mean, if you're the if you're the Falcons, you have to assume in the route you're going, you're not going to have a top ten pick next year. Mm-hmm. That's I mean, yeah. And if you are thinking that, then <laughs> what are you fucking doing? Yeah, exactly. But if unless you believe that Matt Ryan, you're going to sign him to a new deal and keep, mm-hmm. and he's going to have this resurgent like Rodgers and stuff like that of like going to his forty, if you don't think that's happening at four, even if it's you have to take Trey Lance there, I think you have to do that. I mean, and the only thing would be is like, hey, you're you would the only reason you trade back with Miami if they wanted Pitts that bad, mm-hmm. you pick up a second rounder for them, yeah, and you get Trey Lance because if they're, yeah. they're not taking him and the Bengals aren't taking him, mm-hmm. so. You get him yeah. at six. Yep. Yeah, that's the only thing that I'm thinking. Like if they're like if Fields and and their you know big board, if Fields and Trey yeah. Lance are equal, then yeah, you can go ahead and trade back to six and pick him yeah. up there. But other than that, I I if Fields is there, I feel like they have to take him because you know they can feel like he's going to have that resurgence, but he's not. No, he's got a dead arm. He's he's on the down slope. You know, I mean, and you have prime time weapons for a young quarterback. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, you have. Your run game just started going on. You have all first round draft picks at your line. You have Julio yeah. Jones and Calvin Ridley. You know, fuck, take take Pitts. You know what I mean? I don't. I, I yeah, mean, that I would be like a better the, pick than trading that one away. Yeah. I feel like you know. So you put that team together next year, or so you might be able to get Mac Jones. And I think with with those weapons, Mac Jones might be all right in Atlanta. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because you know New York's going to do something fucked yeah. up. <laughs> but. uh but he has, and I, th- I thought this one was weird. He has Sewell going to the Bengals. Yeah. Ever, and now, I, I've heard both sides of it because it was a lot of the talk was the Bengals pick. Yeah. I've heard the guys from Pro Football Focus and CBA. And I've, I've tried to listen to all of them and try to get all the sides of it. They were saying that Chase has way more upside than Penny Sewell. I, I don't know, know how they know I don't that. know how you compare those two things because they're way, one, they're yeah. completely different positions. Two, it's hard to pass up on an athletic tackle. Yeah. Here, the way I see it, there's no debate between Sewell and Chase. No. There is none. For, for the Bengals, mm-hmm. you have to pick Sewell. That's the only fucking pick for you. Mm-hmm. Now, the only way you could make, if there's any discussion, it's if Pitts is there at five. Yeah. Because he's also a tight end. Now, again, they just now they just signed Thaddeus Thad Moss. Moss. So when they signed Moss, mm-hmm. it just my Twitter ini- blew up. My ni- my initial thought was, all right, well they got Joe as LSU guy, yeah. So they're not taking they're Chase, Chase, they're that, taking Sewell. That was my thought too. It's exactly what I thought. Yeah, and also the other people that's like, well, the Bengals might trade back because Sewell's going to be available. It's like one, they don't trade. Yeah, and if you're <laughs> saying this in your mock draft, then you know nothing about the fucking draft <laughs> yeah. because I don't know that the Bengals phone systems work. Yes. So. <laughs> So they, and then he has the Falcons <laughs> taking Trey Lance that we talked about yeah. of him falling, but he still has them taking Trey Lance over fields. He has fields dropping this far. Yeah. Which we said, one of them is going to drop. Somebody's going to drop Detroit taking Jamar chase. I feel like what's his face likes Waddle better. Seems like he's tougher. You know what I'm saying? If this guy wants the tough players, Waddle's a pretty fucking tough yeah, guy. It seems well, like. Yeah. But chase is, he's It'd be the, hard to pass that one up. He's the guy. And then you get. You know, you, you get what's his face, Goff, a weapon or so, you know, yeah. helps that out a little bit. 
the Panthers. They have Devontae Smith from Alabama going to the Panthers. See, I, I find it troublesome for Devontae Smith coming off the board before um, Waddle. Oh, yeah, me too. Because everybody's yeah. like, well, you know, he won the Heisman. It's like, you know what? Yeah, but before Waddle, now if you're saying Waddle's going to drop because of the injury, we don't mm-hmm. know about his ankle. Yeah. Okay, I'm yeah. fine with that. Mm-hmm. But if you're saying his ankle's good, Smith wasn't the best receiver on his own fucking team. No. Nope. And it's not even close. He wasn't even putting Waddle's up. Waddle's the best receiver from that team. You didn't know about Devontae Smith until Waddle got hurt. Yeah. You didn't. You heard about <laughs> Waddle because he, one, he can do way more things for yeah. you. You're getting a kick returner, you're getting a or a punt returner, you're getting a receiver. Yeah. You know, you're getting what people thought Cordell Patterson was going to be. Right. Yeah. Waddle, I, it, mm-hmm. to me, it's like they're hanging that up because the year that Smith had. It's like, yeah. well, Waddle was off the field. Now, yeah. if you're saying it's because of injury, okay, then I'm mm-hmm. fine. Well, hey, we don't know about that ankle, so we're going to take Smith. Okay. Yeah. But if you're okay with that ankle, it's fucking Waddle. Yeah. He's the guy. Yeah. Jamar Chase, the best receiver in the in the draft i think mm-hmm. we can both probably agree on yes. that yeah yeah and then this is the one that i find troublesome personally is that my i think it's my headphones there it is you. sorry they have the broncos taking micah parsons <laughs> yeah which, when i seen that i, I almost <laughs> texted you and like again the linebacker draft this year is kind of deep where you don't yeah. have to take this guy right there. It's also not 1995. Exactly. Well, we don't have to take a linebacker in an inside linebacker. It's not a pass rusher. Nope. He's a blitzer. Okay, I'll give him that. Okay. But our defensive guy doesn't blitz his inside backers. Doesn't even matter if he did. It's a fucking right. top 10 pick. Exactly. <laughs> but if this, is, if this is the way it goes, this scenario we're talking about, you're taking fields if you're Denver. Yes. You, ha- you, have, you have to. to. You have to take it. If this is the scenario, you have to take him. I'm not even okay with that. What you know what I mean? Like I would rather no, them just it makes no sense. I would just rather them just trade the pick and collect some other twos. Yeah, but yeah, that's if you're saying Fields is available, then you're taking Fields. You're not taking yeah. Michael Parsons. You're just passing on him because the fucking quarterback or linebacker. Yeah, because here's what. It, obviously, I know in this mock draft, I know what happens at the next pick. Yeah, but I would more apt to see that trade happen to that pick, at and nine. then Denver back at fifteen, 15. can pick up. Yeah. One of the nine defensive first round picks. Exactly. Yeah. Get hey, get a defensive back because you fucking suck back there too. Yeah. Well so, I, we just signed two, you know, all pros, but yeah. it's fine. Fine. Okay. But yeah, but the, the New England trading up to ten, them trading up to nine seems better, or trading up to and switching out with the Panthers to try to block Denver from grafting that quarterback seems more right. logical to me than trading after that. You know what I mean? I, so the, he has New England trading up for Fields. If Fields would go to New England, I think that'd be cool. It's per, and that's one of those things that sucks to say. Obviously, being a Ohio State fan, you mm-hmm. want your guys to be picked first. But uh, best for him, if somebody's going to fall, if yeah. I was Fields, I'd rather be the one to. Obviously, money is a big yes. fucking deal, mm-hmm. you know, especially in that slotted system. Yep. But for me to fall and get to a team that actually wants to win, because mm-hmm. most of them don't. Yeah, they say they do. Yeah, they're just, but they do a lot of shit that says otherwise. otherwise. Yeah, and I'm all agreeing on New England trading up in this draft. They've been super fucking aggressive in free agency. I don't know why I would stop now. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I don't, I don't think they will. You don't I think, think they so? trade back? Okay, they might. I mean, I think that yeah, I think they get their eyes on either receiver that they can pick up around twenty. Okay, you know, yeah. Either way. I'm okay with that one. And then the Giants taking Waddle. Um, the Eagles taking Patrick Sertan. That one kind of shocks me, too. Of all the things that the Eagles need, yeah, you're, you're taking, taking a corner? Yeah. Like, I understand. Because that's going to solve your fucking problems. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's... There's receivers on the... That, for the Eagles, they are the one that if, the, if somebody's falling that they don't need, mm-hmm. that's the one of... Say if the Patriots don't trade up and take fields say fields off the board mm-hmm. <clears throat> that's the pick with Sertan. that's where the patriots come up to 12 yeah. to get him because they mm-hmm. need that yes the eagles can fall back and get and a, pick up a receiver yeah or you know yeah. something that makes more sense than yeah. him at them at 12 uh the chargers drafting the tackle from northwestern that makes sense yeah you know, got to protect the young guy 
Um, Minnesota drafting the other tackle from Virginia Tech. Dallas getting the corner from South Carolina. You know what? I want to talk about this for a sec. Okay. It just because I've been hearing a lot of this, and it's been a sports talk radio thing for the last couple of days, and just off the local channel that I've been listening to of mm-hmm. like being an ESPN thing, I haven't heard it from anybody that actually knows anything. Yeah. <laughs> but um, they're like, well, you just never know what Jerry's going to do. He could he could trade up and get that Kyle Pitts. I mean, that's it, a weird thing that Jerry would do. It's like, yeah. have you guys watched? Like, Jerry is like one really fucking good at the draft. Yeah. Really good at the draft. Yeah. Two, if he traded up for that, it's a good move. Mm-hmm. But you'd have to give up a bunch. Yep. I mean, way too much. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, he's the wild card, man. Nobody knows what he's going to do. Like, he's obviously the last 10 years been very sensible with his draft picks of yeah. what do we need? Mm-hmm. Interior, lineman, stuff. We built, we're building our yeah. team. Yep. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. the Raiders that yeah, do stupid do shit like, like that. that. Yeah. Hey, we're going to come up from 20 to four to pick a tight end. Yep. <laughs> and you already have one. three rounds of your fucking. Yeah. yeah exactly. I mean, they, but they would do something like that. That's what they would do. Well, we, if we that's compare, not, if we compare both of them together, we're unstoppable. And, like, and if Dallas traded up to get Pitts, I wouldn't even say that that's a bad no, it's move. Not a, it's no. actually a really good move with mm-hmm. seeing as how you just signed your quarterback. You could use another weapon that you don't have to pay for the next yeah, four years. Exactly. So. Because they're kind of at a win now thing. Yeah. Because they're they going to cut Zeke next year. Mm hmm. And then the Cardinals taking another corner from Virginia Tech. The Raiders, he has them taking the dude from the lineman from USC. That's not a stupid pick, so I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, the Raiders got to do something stupid. Mm-hmm. Just because that's just what they do. Yep, that's what they do on draft day. Yeah. It's just it doesn't what, matter who's no, it there. It doesn't matter. What they do. Yeah. And then the Dolphins taking the guy from Michigan, the defensive end. Washington linebacker Corey bears pay, a tackle. Pain? Is yeah. It pay or pain? Pay. Pay. Yeah. Should be pain. Could be. Would be cool if better with pain. Would he pain? Yeah. Major yeah. pain. Major pain. <laughs> I'll stick my foot in, <laughs> in your, your ass. ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's still one of my favorite fucking uh, movies. It's great. Great. Says if the monster in the closet, he ain't happy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so nobody else that anybody knows about is getting picked until the Steelers. He has them I, taking Najee Harris. Yeah. I don't mind the pick. I don't either, mainly because it's so late. It's so late, and, and you're starting running back just signed with the Cardinals, so yeah. you don't have one of those. But? I feel like ETN would better fit what they want to do. When were they successful? With Bell. Yeah. He did both. He ran, he caught. Well... But you can make the argument because a lot of people, because a lot of people don't pay attention. Najee Harris caught a fuck he ton did. of passes out of he that did. backfield, but they were screens. They weren't. I understand uh, that. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, that's what you're catching in the NFL. You are. But they would line up Bell as a slot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They would do different things with yeah. him, try to get mismatches. I don't think if you line up Najee Harris at the slot or anything like that. I don't know if they're respecting that. You know what I'm saying? No, probably not. Yeah, that, but that's what I, that's where I'm at. I'm looking at, okay, the Steelers are trying to get back to what they were before yeah. all the drama shit happened with Bell and Brown and all that stuff. I, I just feel like he would be better. No, I don't think it's a bad pick if, if no. you're wanting to ground and pound like, you know, old school Steelers. But I think to me, this and this is our disagreement that we'll have mm-hmm. on this, I'm more of the... To me, there's more options with Najee Harris than there is with ETN. Okay. Mainly the fact because I think he can run the ball in the NFL, mm-hmm. and I'm not so sure Travis ETN can. Okay. I think he's more of a Giovanni Bernard. Okay. Just a third down back comes in. Amazing and, yeah. career. Probably going to get a Super Bowl now because fucking Tampa yeah. just signed <laughs> yeah, exactly, him. Exactly, yeah. That's when you know you're <laughs> being a Bengals fan of like, hey, you know what? We've had this guy for a while. Yeah. We don't know what to do with him. <laughs> He's been very good for us. Mm-hmm. We're going to cut him. Yeah. And then the pay, or the uh, Tampa's like, yeah, we'll fucking take that guy. Yeah, exactly. Like, ah, shit. shit. Yeah. Well, they did the same thing. The Patriots, the same thing with Rex Burkhead. Yeah. Like, ah, the Bengals don't know how to use this guy. Yeah. We'll use him and we'll win. <laughs> we'll win. Yeah. Corey Dillon. Yeah, exactly. Hey, you guys uh, wasted this guy's career. He came up here with <laughs> fuck the Super Bowl. Bowl so. Yeah. Oh, gosh. The Jaguars drafting that safety from TCU. The Browns taking an inside linebacker, which makes sense. 
because their linebackers are garbage, and you can take one at 26 because yeah, it makes sense. Because that's where you take them. Ravens taking a receiver. Now, the New Orleans Saints drafting a linebacker, that other inside linebacker, that Zaven Collins from Tulsa. Yeah. I don't think it's a bad move, but I feel like Rondale Moore, Sean Payton would have a field day with him. I don't feel like he's going to be successful in the NFL. I, I see... There's two things I see with him. Now, I don't... Uh, a lot of people are like, well, he could be Taysom Hill. Well, no, he can't. He, he's... No, he can't. Th- yeah, there's another one of... You hey, can't. stop saying that mm-hmm. because Taysom Hill's Taysom Hill. Or not Taysom Hill. Uh, Tyreek Hill. Sorry. Oh. Sorry. Yeah. yeah not no. even close. Yeah, not Taysom not Tyreek even Hill. Close. I said wrong T's. To me, he's more of a... Wrong color. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> right, my bad. My bad. Uh, but to me, he's more of a... Like a Tavon Austin. Okay. You know, that's, that, yeah. if I'm giving comparisons, like, I'm not saying I think he could be better than Tavon Austin, but giving him another Swiss Army knife of moving him around, I don't know, it just feels yeah. like, a, like a Sean Payton kind of guy. Well, see, to me, that's a, if the Patriots traded back, that's, that's who they would take. Okay. Because that's where that works. Mm-hmm. Because their guy that did that stuff just retired because mm-hmm. his knees are fucked. Yeah. I yeah. mean. They, he has the Packers taking a receiver. That'd be I, a, I still don't think they do that. And I don't know who the hell they would take at that point in time. That big bastard from Minnesota. Yeah. No, he's like six, six, five, but I, I don't, I still don't see them taking a receiver. I don't either. I see him doing something fucked up. Yeah. Trading out of it, doing something, you know what I mean? Just something stupid. The fact that we haven't talked about that, like Rogers going in the last year of his guaranteed money, mm-hmm. and they've done nothing. Not now. We don't know if they've been talking to him or not. Of like, yeah. So this guy won an MVP, but are we still in this? Mm-hmm. Hey, we just we drafted. Like you're gonna play this, and you're gone. Yeah. Like, is that where they're still going? I because if they like get to that. training camp, yeah, and it's his last guarantee year, that means they're moving they're on. Going, I mean, yeah. the fact you lock your quarterbacks up. That's yep. just the way it is. If that happens, he he moves on. I mean, I I th- I don't think they want him back. I think they really like the love guy. I, yeah, I feel you know like I mean? that too. I, that's which is weird. Super weird. Just wanting he's taking the NFC Championship two years in a row with fucking nothing. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. And you've not even tried to help. Yeah. And then they came out the other day of like, oh, we're trying to move him around and around and stuff like that to. You know, it's been hampering us from fi- signing free agents. Like, well, you don't sign free agents anyways. anyway. No, you don't. And then they pull up the stat. You sign less free agents than the fucking Bengals do over the last 20 years. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, let's uh, let's not use that as an mm-hmm. excuse. The Bills taking a pass rusher, which that's really the only thing missing from that defense. They have a solid yeah. defense. They just don't have anybody to get after the quarterback. So it makes sense to me. Outside of the quarterback, pass rushers is the second biggest thing mm-hmm. now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it has I would, to be. Yeah, that and that are a tackle. Yeah, I mean, the Chiefs they have him taking an outside linebacker, but they have to get a tackle, wouldn't you think? I would think so. Since they don't have one, and there's they don't, a couple they don't have there. two. Yeah, there's they can actually trade back a little bit and yeah. still pick one up in the mid thirties. Mm-hmm. Well, they're at thirty one. Yeah, but are. they could. You know, somebody wants some because yeah, you've yeah, got you two take, of them yes. available. You get mm-hmm. that Leatherwood guy from Alabama, and the then there's another from one North from North Carolina yeah. or North Dakota State. Yeah, yeah. get him. Yeah, at 36. I, didn't, I didn't like the the linebacker there. There's a. Then again, that's the Bengals pick at 36. Yeah, if they wanted to take a receiver, they could get a tackle there. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, yeah, if Sewell is yes, because he didn't play last year. So that's why I th- mm-hmm. feel like he's dropping because he opted out, didn't he? No, I think he played last year. Did he play? I don't I, think I he think, did. Oh, I'm okay. going to look that up. I, I don't think he to. did. Um, yeah, because the Pac-12 played, didn't they? Mm-hmm. Late. Yeah, but I, I they think... They joined late, but I mean... I, I think he opted out he and was like, yeah. hey, I'm on my way to... He could be, He could have. I don't remember. Um, but then they have the Buccaneers taking that defensive tackle from Alabama to round it out the yeah. first round. Which that's probably a good pick because, you know, you can't... Yeah. You're losing one. Mm-hmm. You can only, you know. Yeah, I mean, how the fuck? How the fuck did I don't know what they paid him? I didn't look into it. But how is it even possible that the Buccaneers picked up Giovanni Bernard? How how did they have anything available to pay that guy? I have an no idea. And I know they still have an offer out to Antonio Brown. And yeah, yeah, and he's obviously he's not 
from the things it's not that, necessary for him to sign right now. No, and the things from I've heard is it's either between the Bucks or the Seahawks. Like Russell Wilson, for some reason, is really pushing to get Antonio Brown. Yeah, which would work for them. Yeah, work for them fine. But I feel like Green Bay should be pushing that too. I feel like they should too. I feel like I feel like the money's all around about the same. Yeah, he's you're not getting. A, you're, you're not, not getting, getting a big you're deal, not getting man. A con- you're getting a one year, a two year max. Yeah, and your your guaranteed is five. Yeah, seven, a seven at the late at the greatest. Because the, the only other ones you're gonna get, it'd be like, hey, uh, you got an offer from Chicago. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. you know, it's gonna yeah. be. You can either go to Seattle mm-hmm. with a chance to win, Tampa chance to win. I'd say Green Bay, but they they would never no. even make an offer. Hell no. Other than that, it's gonna be like fucking Houston. Uh-huh. It's gonna be yeah. teams that are gonna win five games. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and then you know. You know, you know who needs them, fucking Steelers. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they really do. Did you? I mean, what if that happened? Like, are they are they back? It's the Steelers. Yeah. No, because Ben's not good enough. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm I just you. don't believe that. Uh, there's some. I don't know what it. Uh, I'm not saying that his talent is dropped mm-hmm. off or anything. Yeah. But there's there is something wrong in Pittsburgh. I don't know what it is. Yeah. But with the receivers that they have and the quarterback that they have, like they should average more than two yards of completion. Yeah. I and I I or three yard or three yards yeah, past. I know, you know what you're saying. For me, watching because I watched a handful of their games last year, yeah. you know, I just didn't like like they all they just passed. Yeah, because they couldn't run the they ball. They couldn't run the ball. I think that was a lot of it, too. And I'm not saying that Ben's a play-action guy, but when you know that the, the only thing that they do is pass, like they were passing, they were doing a shitload of screens because they couldn't run the ball. And I know a lot of people say this, you know, because you hear it and you'll hear it in college and shit mm-hmm. like that, but you hear it a lot. People say, well, they, that's just an extension of their run game. No, it's not. Nope. Running the ball and throwing a two-yard slant to a slot receiver is two different fucking two different things. things. Yeah. And it's not even no. a comparison. No, it's like not. Like, you have to be able to run the ball some. You have to. An RPO is an extension of your run game, but they're not doing that because you no. know they're not handing the ball off. No. Like, last year, they ran, like, simple traps and dives. Like, you didn't try to scheme anything. Yeah. I just, you know, and I know they have a new offensive coordinator. Maybe he'll try to run the ball a little bit more. I'd hope so. Yeah, but fuck, kind of have to. Mm-hmm. They're a team that that's how they play. Now you yep. can't win with defense anymore. Mm-hmm. It's just not the way it works in yeah. the NFL. But they have enough shit to to do that. And their tr- defense is good enough. To, yeah. To, hey man, can you can you put twenty points on the board? Because mm-hmm. you don't want a lot of games last year if you yep. could score twenty. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. mean. Yeah. I don't know. That's yeah. Just a weird thing. Oh, I heard a thing too in this back in the Justin Fields debate. We're gonna bounce back to that for a second. They're talking about yeah. like third down conversions and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And I heard I can't remember who had said it, but they were talking about it like if you're looking at third down conversions from a quarterback from college, that's just the dumbest thing ever. Yeah. Because most of the third down, especially for a team like Ohio State, are third down and ten. Yeah, exactly. Because something happened. Uh-huh. Because they, they don't have those because running backs rip off fifteen yard plays. So they don't have a lot of third downs, and yeah. when they have one, it's because mm-hmm. they have they have one yeah. of like okay, because yeah. you know it's either third and ten or more because you either got a sack or you know a trick play that didn't work, or it's third down and one because you tried taking a deep shot on second down. Yep. So third down conversions mm-hmm. is is a weird thing to look at in it, college. Yeah, and I'll and I'll pony off of that too, especially if you're looking at the Justin Fields. Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, bunch of them is they're going to run that third and one too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that, they have that yeah. option too. You know, Trevor Lawrence, yes. Mac Jones, no. No. But you know what I'm saying? Like that, that's skewed too. You know what I'm saying? Like hell, hell half of them, if it's a third and 10 and they're close, they'll, they'll pull it because they're thinking they're going to pass. You know what I'm saying? And they'll, right. they'll bust off a 10 yard run yeah. because nobody sees it coming. You know what I mean? So yeah, I'm with you on that. And I just feel like the back on the Mac Jones debate of, the chance to that to pull that mesh point, that's just the NFL now. Mm-hmm. Like the the Mac Jones quarterback just doesn't seem yeah. like a thing. Mm-hmm. Like, well, Tom Brady's doing it. Well, he's Tom Brady. Peyton Manning did it. Well, he's fucking Peyton Manning. Yeah. Uh, I mean, 
You know, you're you, seeing even the, when you look at the old quarterback, like the best comparison would be Matthew Stafford. Yeah, or not Matthew Stafford of um, shit. I thought it's not a bad comparison. <laughs> I think Stafford's more mobile though. I do too. Um, Matt Ryan. Yeah, Matt Ryan is. Yeah. You know, they say, "Well, he looks like Tom Brady." No, he looks like Matt Ryan. Mm-hmm. And I, I think it was Keyshawn said, "Are you taking Matt Ryan number three overall right now mm-hmm. in this NFL?" Yeah. Because if the answer is no, then you can't be drafting Mac Jones at yeah. fucking number three. Yeah. I mean, hell, you know, even in the older quarterbacks, Aaron Rodgers fucking moves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just the way the world is. Yeah. Not to shit on Mac Jones, but I don't understand how how he got so popular. After the national championship game, he was still like, hey, you know, if he can get in the top 20, that's yeah. good. Now, it's like, well, now he's third? A lot of people... From not playing? Two months or a month ago, people had him going 32 to the Buccaneers yeah. as the predecessor. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's like, what the hell happened? Yeah, I don't understand how that gets... I don't either. And none of, it could all be bullshit just because mm-hmm. nobody has anything to talk about. Yeah. Well, now that... Because now the... Uh, I find it funny the talks about the fucking training camps and shit mm-hmm. or the, the OTAs. Yeah. I'm like, there's no way guys are going to stay away. No. Hey, we need to boycott these. It's not going to happen. Well, mm-hmm. this guy, if he shows up, makes $100,000. Yeah. <laughs> and the last five guys on the roster, if they don't show up, they might not have a fucking job. So you think they're not going to go? Yeah, I know. Well, that's fuck what, like, the, here with that. The Patriots saying... Some of our, Some. So, so yeah, like the lower level guys. Yeah, because you know, the, the one up. guy that's a special teams player says, Bill Belichick says, hey, we start, I'm going to go. go. I, that's Because I play special teams. teams. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not the quarterback. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it's weird. And like all those guys that opted out, hey, you can opt out this last year. It won't, shocking how many of those guys got fucking cut that uh-huh. opted out last year. Yeah. Hey, we won't hold it against you. I mean, you didn't play, yeah, so we're so. going to cut you. But. <laughs> yeah, we, you, we don't know what you got. <laughs> also, we fronted you some money. We're going to need that back. Yep. <laughs> so with Julian Edelman retiring, the whole big debate now is, is he a Hall of Fame receiver? Why is that even a debate? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, and not saying it, he is or he isn't. Here, of like, I've never even thought about that. And the fact that his retirement, and within an hour of the retirement, was like, well, is he a Hall of Famer? Like, yeah. He wasn't even on that list. Yeah, no. Is he a Hall of Famer? Does he have Hall of Fame numbers? Yes. No. Oh, he doesn't? I well, mean, he played six years. Played longer than that. Count his injuries up, buddy. He okay. had six years All in right. the NFL. Gotcha. Okay, if you're doing it that way, yeah. I mean, but some of the receivers that have, are in there, I mean, I, I'm i not saying, again, and I think a lot of people instantly think of first ballot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I, he's not that no. by far. No. And there should be other people in there at that position way before him. But everybody wants to look at. You're talking like 15 years from now? Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's what I'm I'm not saying like in the next five years. Or yeah. Five years after he retires. I mean, like he's going to be an older guy. Yeah. Getting it. You know, when they've had like these last two years, they've had, you know, your first ballot guys and they've put in, they've had the second vote of the older guys who they're just trying to put in there. Remember that? Yeah. I, that's where he's at. I'm, I I think he's a Hall of Fame receiver. He's just not an immediate yeah. Hall of Fame receiver. Because I think the stats on him, I think twice he caught over 100 balls, mm-hmm. once he caught 92. That's it. I I, think, I don't know that he ever had a 1,000-yard receiving season. No, I think he has. Has he? Yeah, I think he has. I For no, me... He, you know, he's got a Super Bowl MVP and yeah. stuff like that. Like, he's done things. That's, that's where I'm at. Like, his postseason numbers are... Good enough, in my opinion, to yeah. get him in by postseason alone. Because if we're going to judge people on, oh, he's not a Hall of Fame quarterback because he didn't have a Super Bowl. Yeah, you can't. You do can't that. do that. But I'm saying, but if we're doing that, then his playoff numbers kind of speak for themselves. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I yes, I think he is. But down the road, I mean, yeah. he's not an immediate one whatsoever. And, and I, I like the the one thing of like, hey, when Heinz Ward gets in, yeah, then we can talk about Evelyn. Yes, that's just and that's what I'm saying. There's plenty yeah. of guys that should I mean, be that's in before just the him. way it is. Yeah, I mean. I don't even think like shit. Who was in? I know Hines was brought up. There was another one that was brought up. I'm like, yeah, those guys need to be in way before. But you just can't. Yeah. But and the bad thing is, is because what? There's only five. Only five people get in a year. Yeah. Um, one of them's always a quarter. I mean, mm-hmm. and but like because when you're there's such a log jam at receiver. Yeah. And every year one retires that has 
three times the numbers mm-hmm. of what these, you know, it's like, yep. it's going to be some time. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's one of those things, too, of... Well, it seems is like Jordy it, Nelson, a Hall of Famer. Yeah, I, guess, I mean, you yeah, know, I mean, that's how I kind of see yeah, Edelman. Yeah, uh-huh. I mean, it, it. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I, I, in my opinion, just like I've said, regular season, no. Yeah, but I think it's postseason. Things speak for themselves. And I don't, I don't think he retired even thinking that it's like, nah, no, no, I'm not a fucking Hall of Famer. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. He seems like he's that kind of guy. Where he's yeah. Like, yeah, probably not. But yeah. Which is a Hall of Fame. It's weird. I mean, I understand why you're only putting five in because you don't want to, I guess. I, you know what? I don't even know about that. Mm-hmm. You can't have years like fucking Major League Baseball. There's no Hall of Famers this year. Yeah. It's like, well, you're saying our sport is so shitty. We don't yeah. have anybody good enough to get in our museum. Yep. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's what, what you're you just saying. said. Yeah, That's what much. you just said. But, you know, with the five number, it's like, like there's a lot of people four years from from now. What do you do with Adam Vinatieri? Yeah. Guy's pretty fuck. It's the first one to ever hit a game winning kick in a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Only and he's hit multiple. Yeah. He's a all-time leading. leading scorer. Yeah. Never be broken because now they've gone At to 17, 17 games. games. Yep. Yeah. Does he get in first ballot? Because he should be, mm-hmm. but he's a kicker. So yeah. is it 15 years from now before yeah. Adam Vinatieri gets in? It's a tough one. I mean, it's you know, it's, it's it one is. of those things of like you, you, you put that five number on it. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, there's guys that need to fucking be yeah. in that Hall of Fame, mm-hmm. but they're not a quarterback and they're not a wide receiver. Mm-hmm. So what What the fuck? Yeah. Because hell, the, the linebackers even, you know, the way the league's going now, the linebackers even yeah. deserve to be in the Hall of Fame because <laughs> now they're not doing it. Because uh-huh. now they're guard, you know, they're, they're defending passes. They're not making tackles. Yeah. You know, you're not going to yeah. have a... <laughs> You don't see the number of like a fucking Ray Lewis that makes 170 fucking tackle. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like that yeah, shit ain't you're happening. You're like at like 130, I think, yeah. is like your I mean, max. It's yeah. like high school numbers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It just, I don't know. I thought it was an interesting. It was super quick, though. It was like he instantly puts out that video. It was like, is he a Hall of Famer? Like, let me get some time it's first, like, you boy, know? We got nothing going on mm-hmm. that we're discussing whether a fucking slot <laughs> receiver for the Patriots is a <laughs> Hall of Famer. Is West Welker a Hall of Famer? Yeah. Because he created the position yeah. before Edelman, he is. I yeah. mean, yeah. There's, like uh, I yeah, said, that's, that's another there's one. There's a lot of people. Nobody's having that discussion. Yeah. And he's been retired for a long time now. And I say he created the position mainly because he was small and white. Yes. I mean, the slot <laughs> position has always been a position. But he's a, I have to be willing to get my head, head ripped, ripped off, off for me to be in yes. this league. Yeah. So that, that's how that goes. Uh-huh. I was thinking, and it came up, uh, the Hall of Fame thought, and it's not obviously just being a Bengals fan. They're not Hall of Famers, but um, like a Boomer Esaias and stuff like that. Because mm-hmm. I had this thought about teams not being able to find quarterbacks. And the Bengals have been shitty for now. You know, the last these last few years they've been shitty, but they had a 10-year run where they're mm-hmm. pretty fucking good. I mean, they didn't win any playoff games, but yeah. hey, you win 11, 12 games in the NFL, that's uh-huh. fucking, you're pretty fucking well, you good. Kept Marvin Lewis's job for an extra I mean, you're pretty years. good. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Um. When you look at their his, especially in my lifetime, the one thing that they've been able to do is the Bengals have always had a fucking quarterback. Mm-hmm. Like other teams can't yeah. find them. The yeah. Bengals always have them. They just can't do anything, anything else. Yeah, with, with it. I mean, you went yeah. from you had Boomer Siason, then they had the uh, the Klingler thing, but he just he could have been a good quarterback, but uh-huh. like he had like nine hundred concussions because he <laughs> get murdered. Jeff Blake was Jeff very Blake. serviceable. Yeah, and you wouldn't remember Jeff that, but Blake. it was so fucking exciting to watch him play because they had yeah. Darnell Scott and Carl Pickens, uh-huh. and he came out of that because that was Colorado's offense. Is yeah. you just gonna chuck it down? Uh-huh. The f- motherfucker could f- sling it. It's like, hey, I'm gonna drop back. We got two of the fastest guys in the NFL. Uh, I'm just it. gonna throw it as far as I can, see if I can catch it. A lot of times they did. Yeah, it'd be like, uh, <laughs> it'd be like Carl Pickens has. Two cat or three catches, two touchdowns, and 180 yards. I was like, <laughs> what the fuck? But that's yeah. what it was. Yeah. You know, and then the Carson Palmer, good quarterback. Mm-hmm. Nobody's going to deny that. Yeah. People shit on Andy Dalton. Good core. Qu- Andy Dalton's yeah. a good fucking quarterback. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You get double digit wins, uh-huh. multiple seasons in the NFL, you're a good fucking quarterback. Yeah. And then to Joe Burr, when you look at this timeline of their quarterbacks going, yeah. 
fuck are you guys not winning more games than you do? Uh -huh. I mean, yeah, a lot of people have won more games with less. Yeah, <laughs> less. You know, yeah. But and it's and it seems like for the most part they always have a serviceable or pretty good quarterback mm -hmm. and a stud wide receiver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, fuck. Like AJ Green was a stud for a mm -hmm. fucking almost a decade. And he had, you know, Chad Johnson and TJ Hushmanzada. Yeah, had those two guys together. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, I mean, going we're back, not talking about that. Chad Johnson, a Hall of Famer. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if you're going to talk about Julian Edelman, yeah, I, I'm saying before Edelman, he yeah. is. I mean, yeah, I, that's I, I said there's got a lot of guys got to be in the Super Bowl. Well. You just put Megatron in. He doesn't uh -huh. fucking have one. No. I mean, Chad Johns has way bigger numbers than Julian Edelman does. Mm -hmm. way, way bigger. Way bigger. Yeah. Yeah. TJ Hushman's out of too. That motherfucker. I liked him. Awesome. I liked him. Dude, and when that that commercial, that karaoke commercial yeah. came out, oh, <laughs> yeah. Hushman's <Zada>. out. <laughs> I mean, that was the greatest. That dude. was my, when I was a kid, those were my favorite commercials with the league when it first started coming out. Yeah. And they were doing the draft. Like, and he was trying to pronounce his last name. Yeah. TJ, who's, who, who's, who's your mama? <laughs> yeah. Who's your mama? <laughs> but yeah, that was the way I went with that with the Bengals of like, boy, they've had some fucking mm. players. Yeah. And then, you know, like the other thing with them is like, hey, the Bengals announced they're going to do a ring of honor. Mm -hmm. Like, really? Everybody else does. <laughs> Everybody else has it. And they're going to put in. The one guy is their Hall of Famer of like, oh, you mean like the greatest lineman that possibly ever played the fucking game? Yeah, no shit. There's another one that's like, <laughs> yeah, you had a fucking now. Granted, they went he went to Super Two Bowls with him. Yeah, but <laughs> one you, of the greatest. You don't have this guy's name been. up somewhere. He's you only have. I think there's only two Bengals Hall of Famers. Yeah, and he's one of them. And the other one is uh, Paul Brown. Paul Brown. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah exactly. You know. <laughs> you have a Hall of Fame lineman that took, you know, went to the Super Bowl. You don't have him honored in your yeah, fucking stadium. Yeah, still don't have an indoor facility. Yeah, like a bunch of fucks. They are, but I you, keep watching. Yeah, you're keep still a fucking fan. Fucking watching. Yes, because they might do something. <laughs> they might. I, They could do something. Nah, they've been okay in the draft last couple of years. Not bad. They they do sensible stuff. That mm -hmm. I mean, besides never making a trade of like, yeah. <laughs> we don't need to pick this guy here. You could pick up a couple more picks and move back a yeah, little bit. Exactly. Other than that, they usually seem to get a sensible guy. You know what? They did trade two years ago in the draft. Did they? Yes. They traded up. The only reason I know that is because they traded with Denver. They traded up to draft Jonah Williams from the from Alabama, the tackle. And what round was that? First round. Really? Yep. I don't remember that. The only reason I know that is because Denver took the second round pick they got from him and drafted Drew Locke. It's the only reason I know that. So the Bengals are your problem. Yep. <laughs> Just like everybody else's. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, uh, I don't know what that. Yeah. That's an interesting pick to me there at nine. Because mm -hmm. they need a quarterback because obviously Drew Locke's not it. No, but at this rate, it seems like they're like, ah, we're just going to suck with him. Well, how are you with Drew Locke? If you're Drew Locke, just going to like, hmm. what? Yeah. Nobody fucking wants me here, but nobody's doing, <laughs> doing anything, anything else. It. Yeah, I know. I mean, yeah. You can't feel good about yourself, but. Yeah. Yeah, I'm starting quarterback in the NFL. But are you? But are you? Because it seems like everybody on your team is saying, yeah, he's not our he's fucking not, guy. He's not very good. Yeah. He's just, you know, yeah, he's there. here. Yeah, he's here. We I mean, we played him. a game with no quarterbacks last year. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> yeah. What a shit show they are. Super shit show right now. We have a good team. We just are they the new Browns? With quarterback drafting? A 100%. Yeah. I think they had to get about two more, two more draft picks of bad quarterbacks to be up there, but it's getting fucking close. But that's another one. Nobody drafts quarterbacks. No. Nobody does. And, you know, when we're talking about drafting quarterback, because they're in the talks to trade up to four to draft one of them. Right. I would, I'm going to be so upset and so pissed off if they trade up to take anybody other than Justin Fields. I just yeah. am. If you're going to miss, miss with somebody who was at least decent in college. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if the Jaguars miss on Trevor Lawrence, nobody's going to shit on them because he, 
everybody would have taken yeah. Trevor Lawrence in this draft. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If the Texans would have sh- missed with Deshaun Watson, nobody would have shit on him because no. everybody would have taken him right there. You know what I'm saying? Like, trade up to take somebody that... It's the... When you trade up to take Mitch Trubisky. Yes. That, and that's my fucking problem with the... of the Like, you're trading up to take guys out of colleges that don't fucking... Mm-hmm. Not that North Carolina didn't play anybody. They played Clemson. Mm-hmm. But it, you're not... You're trading up for a coin flip. Yeah. I mean, because there's only ever one quarterback in each draft. Mm-hmm. Ever. Maybe. <laughs> and that's, you know, yeah. but on a year like this, mm-hmm. like there's Trevor Lawrence and then nobody else knows. Yeah. And the fact that you're trading up to take a guy from BYU or you're trading up, uh, hey, hey, chances are this shit isn't going to work. Uh-huh. And I heard uh, somebody the other day said, uh, of the top 15 picks of the draft, mm-hmm. one person in there is going to be a Hall of Famer. Yeah. One. Yeah. Do you, are you, I mean, like, what's what's been proven in your track record that you can trade up and pick that guy? Mm-hmm. <laughs> because not, not a lot of teams have Hall of no. Famers on it. No. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what I want. And I'm going to be so pissed off if they trade up and they draft like a Trey Lance or even if they trade up and take like a Mac Jones. Like, yeah. I don't want that. You I don't want that. You know what I'm saying? Like, trade back. Don't trade up. The biggest quarterbacks in the league right now, none of them were drafted in the top five. Yep. Or the top ten. No. <laughs> Russell Wilson wasn't even a first rounder. Yeah. Probably because of his personality. Mm. He probably would have been a top ten pick, but yeah. they said, this guy. <laughs> this guy. He's a terrible human. <laughs> Look at his fucking hair now. <laughs> yeah, what's up with that? He's rocking a mullet, mullet. kind of thing. I don't, <laughs> I don't know, know what, what the is. fuck is going on. He looks like an idiot. Oh, man, there's one that just threw right through my head of, like, <laughs> on that other podcast, I'd have let that fucking thing rip, but it's not going to rip right now because, oh, you know, God. people would be upset. All right. <laughs> so, where I say something that's going to get us all in trouble, we should probably just sign off of this Sounds thing. Sounds good. All right. White side. <laughs>